Hey everybody, this is the Try to DIY Guy. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thanks to my subscribers who after only one video are tuning in. I uh, really appreciate it guys and uh, hopefully I can keep doing some do-it-yourself builds uh, that you enjoy. Today is going to be a digital temperature controller. I use this for home brewing. You could use it probably for aquariums or lizard tanks or anything like that. Uh, it has both a heating and cooling function. Uh, depending on what the settings are, you'll turn on the receptacle respectively of uh, heating or cooling and I'll show you how to get all that wired up. Uh, obviously electricity is involved in doing this so if you know if there's anything that you're not comfortable with I would suggest uh, you talk to a licensed electrician or or somebody who knows more than me. I'm, I'm absolutely not a licensed electrician uh, nor am I an electrician period so if you have any questions I would ask somebody who knows obviously this is at your own risk so please be safe and whatever you do and, and don't do anything you're not comfortable with doing. Uh, but anyways I'll move forward and I'll show you how this thing turns out. Okay, these are the different elements you're going to need in building this digital temperature controller. First things first, you're going to need the actual controller itself. Uh, this is the STC-1000. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but I got it from China off eBay. I think it was $23, $24 for shipping. The cord you see beside it here is the uh, temperature probe itself. Went to Lowe's, got a uh, black receptacle with a uh, black cover plate here. Uh, that ran about four or five dollars, something like that total. Um, I think it was actually like three fifty plus fifty cents or something for the cover plate, so it's not that much. Um, I like the black because it matches the project box here. This is a Radio Shack project box. You can see the dimensions there. If you can, it's a seven by five by three inches. Um, and then I've got the grounded plug here, and you can see with the uh, the three wires, the uh, the neutral. Uh, the hot and the uh, ground there. So that those are the different elements you're going to need. Uh, we'll move forward. First things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this project box apart. I'm going to measure uh, my temperature controller here so that I can cut out a slot in the box here to insert the controller. Uh, so let me go do that and uh, we'll see how that turns out. Okay, we got everything cut out here in the project box. You can see the, uh, the holes I've cut out there. Uh, I, you know, I don't worry about being too clean with these holes uh, as far as the cuts go. I mean, you could take your time and really try and cut them out clean, but they're going to get covered up for the most part anyway. Uh, the only thing that I missed, I barely nicked it right there. Uh, my Dremel kind of got a little loose on me and I nicked it. But other than that, all these edges will be covered up with the, uh, with the plate. Um, so you can see, you know, don't, don't spend too much time on that. Um, the back of the uh, temperature controller here comes with a, um, a little cover plate. I went ahead and took that off so that I could go ahead and prepare for the wiring. It comes with these little uh, braces on the side. That's what'll that's what'll help secure it to the uh, back side of this project box. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Uh, measure the outlet, make sure the box fits and everything. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you how to wire it. Um, the out, just remember to wire everything with the pieces on the outside so that you can just kind of push them in here. Uh, don't go ahead and wire it and then try and push them in from the outside because uh, that could get really complicated. Um, so, anyways, I'll go ahead and move forward and we'll show you uh, how to start doing the wiring. Okay, you could technically buy more wire if you need to, but I, I got a pretty long, about 15 foot of this um, three wire cord here that I really don't need that much of. So I'm going to go ahead and cut, you know, about to here or so, and uh, you, and then strip all that down and use those wires for my wiring for the controller, and then use the rest for the actual supply power. Um, you could go ahead and buy some some new wire if you want. I just would rather save the money and just use part of this because I don't need the plug to be uber long and if I do I can use an extension cord. Uh, so anyways, uh, let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you where I go from there. Okay, first things first, the uh, temperature controller comes with a wiring diagram. Uh, what I did is I ran three black wires here, as you can see, located on the back side there. One for the power coming in, one for the uh, heating and one for the cooling uh, there. And we're going to tie those together to this black wire right here. You can see how those will tie those three together and this one together and we nut and electrical tape those together and then I'll show you where the wiring goes from there. Okay, I've got things kind of wired up here, uh, at least heading that way. Uh, we're on the second stage of wiring. We've got the one, two, three black wires that you just saw tied into the black wire coming in, the, the, uh, the hot coming in. We've got a neutral uh, from the controller. You can see wired like, sorry, uh, wired like that right there. And it will go and it will tie into the uh, neutral to the receptacle. Now we've got a neutral coming from the receptacle and that will tie in to the uh, neutral coming in here. Uh, so 
you can go ahead and uh, leave the bridge right there uh, on this side of the receptacle on the neutral side on the other side I went ahead and broke the tab you can see uh, I've broken that tab uh, you can see the tab here no tab over here so that it can separate heat from cooling uh, let me go ahead and connect this and Okay, we're starting to get with things wired up here. Uh, looking from the controller, you can see here's the hot leg coming in, the uh, neutral going out. Then here's the three, you know, the, the this is the three hot legs right here, the one, two, three black wires that get tied in right here to the black wire coming in. Uh, you can see here I have the neutral coming out, which ties into the receptacle, and then the neutral coming out, the other end of the neutral coming out of the receptacle ties into the wire coming in. Uh, you can see that they're bridged there, and then on this side, they're not bridged. Uh, I've went ahead and connected the switching legs, which is going to be the hot coming in, and then the controller tells it when to switch it on, and it'll send the power back out through these green ones. A uh, different color would be good there, like a red, but what I did is I just marked them with a Sharpie so that I know uh, which one's which. Um, also, you pay attention to which ones come out of where, because that's what's going to turn on the outlet, the separate outlet for hot and cold. One of these will control hot, one of these will control cold, and that's why you need to break that bridge right there. So uh, let's move forward and I'll show you how it turns out. Okay, here we go. She's all wired up. Uh, tried to separate the wires so that you could kind of see more clearly. Here's the first three black wires we put in, tying in to the uh, hot leg coming in right here. Here's the neutral that comes out, goes to the receptacle. The other uh, end of the receptacle comes out and ties in here, and those are bridged together. Uh, here's the the uh, hot leg that comes out when it's switched on and it goes to each individual uh, outlet receptacle and the bridge is broken. And then the, uh, the ground for the uh, plug coming in ties into the receptacle there. Uh, so, and then go ahead and, and run your temperature probe in here and go ahead and screw that in. But uh, you can see it's starting to come together there. Uh, next I'm going to drill the um, the holes for the screws here and then it should be mounting on the plate putting on the back and uh, it should be ready to run okay guys here she is all assembled together plates on and everything uh, now it's time for the moment of truth let's uh, go ahead and plug it in here and see uh, see how it looks oh we got power good looks like everything's working good uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set the temperatures through the controls here and uh, I'm gonna test the outlets individually and see if uh, See if they come on for heating and cooling. And you might want to mark heat, cool, or however you wired yours up. Uh, like I said, depending on those uh, two wires on the back that come out from the switches uh, is which outlet's going to be hot and which one's going to be cold. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and test that. The only bad thing about this is uh, that this thing only reads in Celsius. Um, I usually just print out a chart and stick it beside it, but that's the only thing that I've noticed that I don't like is is that doesn't read in Fahrenheit, it only reads in Celsius. But overall, it's a good temperature controller and uh, pretty easy to build. So um, let's uh, test these out and see how they work. Okay, I've got it turned on here and it's showing that it's 21.4 degrees in here. Uh, I've set the cooling to 10 degrees just to test it out. So what it should be doing, it should have this outlet turned on and this one turned off because this one's for heating and this one's for cooling. Uh, this way, if I have a deep freezer or something plugged in and it's trying to get it down to 10 degrees, uh, it should turn on the power to this one. So let's go ahead and test that out with our uh, our two prongs here. And according to this, we've got power in that outlet and no power in this one. So we're good to go. Uh, so next I'm going to test, test the heating and uh, it should do the same thing. Okay, now I got it set at 28 degrees and it's showing 21.4 still. Uh, so it should turn on this outlet and leave this one off since, like I said, heating, cooling. So let's try that out and see how we're how we're looking here. Looks like we've got power there. No power there. We are good to go. So anyways, this is how to build your own uh, digital temperature controller. Uh, it's good for aquariums, anything like that. I use it for home brewing, but uh, it's a nice little build. It's not too expensive, and it'll save you some money, and it's a fun little do-it-yourself project. Like I said, if you've got any questions, I'd ask somebody who knows a little bit more than I do. Um, but it's a fun little build and I, I think it's pretty easy. So have a good time and good luck.